been surfing the World Wide Web and looking at pictures on Bing of what's the coolest antique lure I could possibly make. I think it's this one. I, I'm just going to go with this one. The Flying Helgramite is what it is called. The Flying Helgramite. You know Helgramites, they metamorphosize and they, they become something else. A flying bug, a big flying bug. So apparently this is a lure that is an imitation of a Helgramite that has not yet metamorphosized, but it flies. And that's as far as we're going to go into fun facts on a one day build like this. So that's right, this is a one day. I'm going to be making this in one day, fishing with it and catching a fish. And this is a, I think this is a topwater lure. It looks like one of the earlier adaptations of what a buzz bait is today. Because it's got those two wings that come off the side and they're kind of turbine shaped. And I'm going to be crafting my own out of aluminum fabricating my own out of aluminum. That little piece on the back there, that little metal piece, I don't know if that's a weight or what, or if that's just a piece of metal. I don't think I'm gonna have that on mine. It's gonna look like this, but it's gonna be an adaptation of it that's mine, that I made. 11.58, so we started at noon. That's right, I start my days at noon. I do other stuff too. I'm, I'm not some loser that just starts his day at noon. I'm a busy guy. I don't know why they call that a mini lathe. Okay, I need to decide what wood to use actually. Um, I got a lot of poplar. I even have a poplar dowel. This is just in case. I don't really want to use poplar. I'm kind of looking for maple. There's oak. More oak. Oh, that's a cool glide bait I was about to make. That's a good shape. Dude, look at that. Do I have to go to the store just to get some maple? We're losing daylight. Okay, I give up. I'm going to Menards. I've got the maple. Nice pre-wrap, clean grain, $6 little piece of maple. Let's do this. Okay. Here we go. I don't need to show you that. What am I doing? Gotta do the old find your center. Doesn't need to be perfect. The lathe will make it perfect. I don't even have to do it on the other side. This will be the tail end. It's a lot skinnier over here, so I don't really care. Sweet. Safety first, guys. So up here, I want it a big bulbous head that tapers down to a skinny little tail back here. I'm not even measuring, I'm just gonna make the bait look like what the picture looks like. I should probably have a picture up, right? There's my picture. This lure is actually like less than three inches long, I think, the body, the wooden part that you see there. Ours might be a little bit bigger just because I want it to be. Yeah, the head's way up here. So that's the basic shape of this bait. Uh, I gotta cut down, or I got a bunch of lines to make in it. You guys see all those lines in the body back here? And there's a couple up by the head. Simple stuff. I'm gonna do that really quick and just eyeball it. That's pretty good. I'm gonna just relax and leave it at that. I'm gonna part these two sides off and that'll be the bait, or the body of the bait. Whoa! hey -o. That didn't go as planned, but um, uh, one sec. So I cut that excess off with a saw after I took it off the lathe and now I'm just shaping the head to what it needs to be. Probably gonna use a Dremel for this actually. Ideally it would not have popped off the lathe like that, but I was applying too much force and it popped right off the lathe.
So on my version of this flying Helgramite, I wanna use pretty big glass eyes. And instead of having them both on the top, I wanna have them directly on the center line of the bait facing out. So where these two marks are, right there and there. Nice big eyes. I think that looks better than the little ones on the original. Now I need to use a wire. This bait is gonna be a little bit through wire, through the sides. I need to put a wire and they both bend down a little bit and that's what holds the two propeller wings on the sides and the hooks. So I need to drill a hole very cleanly through the side of this bait. So I marked out on each side where the hole needs to be. I'm gonna start drilling them and I'm only gonna go halfway in on each side and meet in the middle. That way the hole comes out of the bait exactly where it needs to come out and I'm not just guessing and going through to the other side. There. Perfect. So the line tie and the other hook hanger on this bait, not gonna be through wire. I'm just gonna twist some twist wire connections into those. But that's it. Right there, that's the body of this bait. No more work needs to be done to carving this thing. But I still got quite a bit more work on fabricating the wings and wiring this bait up. Let's do that. What I need is a template for these wings. They're pretty simple. They seem to be more simple than like a buzz bait style wing or pretty much just the same. Just gonna start out with a shape. Kinda want it to curve. I need there to be a couple of tabs coming off the ends. I think that's it. Those two little tabs coming off the end there are what I'm gonna fold in opposite directions so the so it spins. That's pretty chunky. I might scan this and size it down. I scanned that original drawing and I sized it down a little bit to something more appropriate. I don't want the fins to be giant on this bait. They're gonna come out from the body kind of at an angle like that. And I think I want them right about there and that size. On the original, they kind of look ridiculous to me. I think that looks cooler. Okay, let's get to fabricating. By the way, there's not gonna be any lead or weight or ballast in this bait. It's gonna be kind of made so it doesn't matter what side hits the water. Both the wings are gonna do the same thing. The paint's gonna be the same on either side, so no ballast necessary. Couple of fins, got my tin snips. Just have to cut them out now. This is pretty thin aluminum too, so they're easy to cut out. You gotta be careful with this little tab. I don't want to cut into it. I don't want to compromise its strength because it's also going to have a hole drilled in it as well. Same with this end over here, but that's how simple it is. That's a fin before it's bent right there. I'm just going to clean these up with a file a little bit. Get some holes that are in the center of these tabs and just drill them out with a 1 inch bit. You wanna be sure to leave enough of material around the outside of these holes. That's the only thing that keeps the holes kind of strong, but okay. I think I might need to think about this a little bit. I want the fins to spin like that or like this. I don't want them doing this because that's gonna make the bait move too much to one side. They need to be opposite of each other. So this, I think I want, the heck is that? Anyway, I think I want the bait to throw water from the inside next to the body out. So I want the fins to do this. So this is gonna be the right fin. And I want that. Okay. There. I'll bend this one this way. Or I'll bend them both the same way. Yeah, I have to bend them both the same way. The tabs is what I'm talking about now. There. So I'm gonna do that for the other one, get this wire in the bait, get, get all these set up right, and yeah, make this bait. That trip to the hardware store kinda took a while, but it's 120, we're getting there. Made a bit of a notch right there in this wire. I'm gonna put it in the body of this bait in that hole that I drilled straight through the side. There's the notch. I'm just gonna shove that in there. And I made that notch so it kinda has something to grab onto. 
But before I shove it in there, we need some glue. So that wire is in there pretty secure. On the real flying Helgramite, it looks like there's nothing between the body and the wings. I, I really can't see anything. I'm gonna leave quite a bit of space, but I'm also just gonna bend this wire down to the angle that I want the wings coming off the body. Probably leave as much space as like the thickness of these, the tip of these pliers. Just bend it over that, right about at that angle. Clip these off a little. They don't need to be that long. And there, that wire is secured in there. I'm gonna have these wings secured at about, you know, that distance away. Yeah, that way if I wanna bend them even closer to the body, I have some room to manipulate this bait after it's made, get it to work if it doesn't work initially. You always gotta kinda be mindful of that. But that's good enough right there for now. Uh, I don't need to go any further with this wiring. I just need to install the line tie and the last hook hanger back here, seal the wood and it's ready to paint. Let's do that. Got some twist wire connections already pre-made. They look just like that. I just use super glue and twist them in. Twisting them into maple, you get a very secure anchor for a line tie when you do that. Like I could just leave it like this. I wouldn't need glue. You can't pull that out. It's, it's extremely secure in there, but I'm gonna back it up and add some glue and twist it back in. Sealing the wood. I don't think I've mentioned it before. What I use is some extremely thin super glue to seal the wood. I don't use just normal, like the stuff you can get in the little tubes, you know? I don't think that would work as well because it's pretty thick and you, like you smother it on and I don't think it would penetrate the wood grain at all. This stuff is a brand that you get from Hobby Lobby here in America, Extreme Power. It's very thin. It definitely penetrates the wood grain, even on this hardwood like maple. It's good stuff. Let's seal this bait. Safety first. Missed a spot. It's kind of hard to tell with maple. It's kind of hard to breathe with one of these on. <laughs> this is going to be a cool lure. They used to make really cool lures. They really integrated function into the bait and they didn't care if it was pretty. Well, it was probably pretty for back then. You know, but today bait makers understand how to catch some fishermen and not just the fish. Like they seamlessly integrate the function into the, the looks of the bait as well today. That's important to do if you want to sell baits, sell a lot of baits. Of course, there's fishermen out there that totally get, you know, prettiness does not equal function. It doesn't improve the action, you know. But tell me you've never been a sucker for a good looking bait and I'll show you a freaking liar. We've all bought pretty baits because they're pretty. But there's something about the old baits here. They're cool in a different way. They're cool in like a, they express function kind of way. Like there's stuff coming off of it and that um, they weren't hiding anything, you know? Like a tool. It's like this is a fish catching tool. That's what the old baits look like more. Fish catching tools. That's cool. Let's paint this. So I'm not gonna go for anything too fancy. I'm gonna add some pearls, maybe some fluorescence, make it really pop as a topwater bait, but I'm not gonna go with like scales or some fancy decals, you know, like what I've been using. We're gonna give it an honorable antique paint job. I'm not gonna pretend it's something else. For some reason I feel like this bait's not smooth. I'm way over sanding. I can't stop. I just can't. Give me a second, guys. I have stopped. Start out with some white. I think next I'm gonna try to figure out a way to stencil this thing. I need to, I think, wrap a piece of paper around the part that I don't want painted really evenly though. Like I need to roll it around. Okay, this isn't working. That just, that just isn't gonna work. Uh, do I need to take a paintbrush to this? Let's not debate and let's just make a choice and do that. We're taking a paintbrush to this. This is gonna get manual. I'll be able to like do a lot more specialized work to it using a brush. Really make it how I want it to be. This is a really cool color. Fastback green. It's blue with pearl gold and that is what the whole head's gonna be. Trying to keep a very clean line where I carved that line in on the lathe. If it's not straight, it's gonna be bad. You know, it's gonna look bad. 
but I'm actually getting paint in that line. That's the cleanest way to do it. Let that line do the work and just bring paint right up to it. Don't be afraid of the paint. Isn't this exciting content? Look at this. That looks pretty cool. Really pearlized. There's some interesting figure in there with the pearl gold. Good start. On the real flying Helgramites, they have this greenish. It's like a dark green. That was some phalo green. And to that phalo green, I'm gonna add some lime pearl. Mix that up well. And that lightened up the phalo and it also gave it the pearlescent dynamic. Fancy words, you know, for mixing paint. I'm gonna add that to the center section of this bait. And I really don't know what I'm gonna make the these ribs colored. I might, I might do like a red. On the original bait, they were a wood. I think I'll do a red. Verdict's out right now, but as of now, it's red. That's pretty cool. Those are some interesting colors. And they're kind of dark, and I did that on purpose, so you can't really decipher that line too too well. It's not as clean as it looks, but it looks clean, and that's what's important. I'm definitely doing red for this intersection now. That's not at all traditional. Let me show you. You see, on most of these, it's wood. Um, there was one that it wasn't. I think, yeah, that one's not wood. And if I was a more observant person, I would have noticed that before committing to painting white over the whole bait, but... I'm not, and that's what I did, so now I'm going to paint that part red. I'm definitely doing a thinner coat on the ribbed section here, and if I have to do two or three, that'll allow the detail to show up better. This is like the only section of the bait that has detail, so might as well do what I can to make sure it shows through. Now the last color before we get to work on the eyes is just a silver. All of these have a silver piece on the back and they're actually metal. This one isn't, so I'm gonna paint it silver. <laughs> you know what? I don't like that. I don't care if it's not authentic. I'm gonna put a bright fluorescent chartreuse color on it. That's what it needs. Obviously this thing isn't authentic anyway. Dodged a bullet there, that was ugly. This'll be much better. We'll put plenty of it on here. Give the fish something to bite at. You want it right in the middle. These vintage lures, they have very small pupils on their eyeballs. That's as small as I can make them. And the rest of it's just gonna be red. I'm gonna give this bait red eyes. Or actually, let's give it the bright yellow so that the back of the bait has some symmetry with the front or some sort of connection with the front. That's some five minute epoxy. And here's an eyeball. Not bad. It's got an interesting look to it. Certainly not fancy, but that is not what these old baits were about. So red feathers with this just in there. Yeah. I should have done myself up. I didn't know I was gonna be on a, the famous Merlin Baits channel today. Okay, Chelsea just tied me this uh, feathered treble hook, a nice custom one that matches the bait with the red and the green flashy stuff. And I think we're ready to clear coat. Oh my gosh. Kind of a tricky bait to clear coat because it's got these giant things sticking out the sides. I have to fold them up, then I'm gonna dip the whole thing and then put a drip wire off of the nose. And I'm definitely gonna let this one drip a while. I'm gonna have to break that clear coat off the wire after it's set to, before I add the fins on the side, or the buzz propellers. So in it goes. Uh, whoa, fluorescent. Check this out. Wouldn't it be cool if that's what it did underwater? Just in the short time it's been in there, I haven't even put the lid on, the surface of that UV clear coat being exposed to that light already sets up and it takes like a half an hour or so for it to harden and stop being tacky. But just in my short experience with this stuff, it's really hard to get it to set up as hard as a standard two-part epoxy. It takes a while. Some of the baits that I've made in the past just recently, they're still a little tacky I've noticed. So. 
You have to be patient with this stuff, apparently. About 315 right now. This one's kind of taken a while. I don't know why. It's not that complicated. Oh, I went to Menards and I did start at 12. We'll get that top water bite tonight. Ooh, there's a bee. Oh, it left. I hate bees. Just waiting for that clear coat. I'll shut the camera off now. Time to start cleaning this thing up. I wear gloves like this just to make sure if there is a part of this bait that the clear coat didn't set, um, I don't put a giant fingerprint print into it. It might be a smudge, but fingerprints are way worse and more noticeable. This bait's feeling pretty set and dry though. Now I'm not gonna go back to that trout stream and try to catch a trout with this bait. I have a completely different bait in mind for that, and I'm working on it already, actually. It's not gonna be a one day. I know I've been putting out a lot of one day builds recently, but it's just because the weather is so nice and I get to go out fishing every day. And I don't, one day builds are really fun for me. I, I like doing them, that's why you're seeing so many. But next bait's not gonna be a one day build. I'm not gonna go try to catch a trout with this. I'm gonna go to a pond and try to probably get a bass or a pike or something with this. And uh, I have no idea how I got on that topic, but I'm gonna get off of it and keep working on this. So the next thing I need to do is to figure out exactly how far away from the body I want these wings to be and make it even. I think I'm gonna put a bead up here. Both sides are gonna have a bead before the wing right there. That does look better. I got the bead in the front, a bead behind the wing, and then I have a little mark right there of where I want the line, or I want this wire to be tied off and put a hook hanger right there. And that is where the wing will sit. So I'm gonna go tie that off. So I twisted that wire off to where it's kind of a diamond shape because my pliers are flat. I don't have circle good wire twisting pliers. All that's left to do is wrap that wire around the shank. I'm gonna go do that in the vise. So I have the entire eye clamped up. Like everything that you don't want to move, you have to clamp. Then I grab the end, you can see up here. I grab the end of it with a pair of pliers and I keep this grip the entire time and twist. It's gonna twist around the nose of the pliers too, but I don't care. And all you need is three wraps and then you can snip it. Okay, I'm gonna do that on the other side. So there's quite a bit of space between these wings and the body. And I want these wings to be as parallel with the body as possible. You're not gonna be able to get them parallel with the body at all, but you wanna bring them down like that to catch the water and, and function correctly, I think. Yeah, and that can be adjusted while I'm out on the water too. All right, let's add the hooks. There's the beautiful one Chelsea made. These are just standard VMC short shank treble hooks I'm using on this bait. Top water, flying Helgramite. Recreation. That really does look cool. Looks like a fish catching tool. Lots of you guys have been saying that you want to see what the weight of these baits that I make are. Makes sense, you know. The body of this bait is exactly three and a quarter inches long and she weighs 0.45 ounces, so half ounce. I don't know, man. There's just something about that. That looks cool. Let's stop looking at it. Let's go fishing. The bugs are so bad out here. Borderline unbearable. But we're gonna make our way out to this pond and we're gonna see if we get any top water action out here. We got like four more hours of daylight. 442 right now. Let's hope we can get a fish right away. That'd be great. Gonna be picking all this cottonwood seed off of this bait all day. That's kind of annoying. Okay, fellas, 
I think I have just enough time left of daylight to do a creek fishing adventure. If I don't get a fish, well I do this. I'm not gonna get a fish today. I got about two miles of creek I can walk up and I'm gonna cast this thing. I'm gonna go over the most ideal spots I can possibly find with it. And uh, I kinda want a pike. I wanna catch a pike today with this thing. That'd be cool. Let's catch a pike. so muddy over here. Your foot sinks like a foot into the mud. What happened? All right, let's retreat. I got my lure. Gotta get out of here. Hey, what is my problem today? Where did it go? It's not that deep right here and I've searched everywhere. I'm looking for a bright color. The thing was bright. I found it. Just looked for this bait for like 15 minutes and I found it. Hallelujah. That would be so pathetic if I just casted this into a tree, snapped it off, it fell in the water, floated downstream and I wasn't able to find it and I failed this challenge because of that. Whew. Onward. Oh, just had a hit. Extremely good sign right there. It looked like a pike too. Oh, another hit. That might be a gar. Doesn't that look deadly? Like it just has to get bit. You'd think. Oh. You guys ever get those frustration snags? It's when you get frustrated and then you snag. That looks deadly. Come on, fish. Right there. Right there. Come on. Oh. Wow. What a bunch of buttheads. Let's not fall in the water and ruin your phone. Oh. Oh. This is precarious. I got a hit today. That means there's potential, you know? Oh, God, that's bad. Why am I so stupid today? Oh, it's so bad. Look at that. I got it. Let's get out of this pit of snags. It's crazy only having one bait to fish with. If you snag it, it's gone and you failed. That looks really good, by the way. I'm gonna try this for a bit though. Okay, this looks beautiful. There's gotta be a fish in here. Or not, you know. Man, this is kind of rough. Oh! Three hit, oh, got one. Nice. Very nice. Challenge complete. 
hooked into a decent small mouth. It's official. Small mouth like flying Helgramites or vintage lures, antique lures. That's a satisfying catch right there. That makes me happy. Not bad. Let's let this guy go. That was my exit point too, that bridge right there. So, let's see if we can get another before we leave. That fishing trip, yes, it was a bit of a struggle, but I'm satisfied that I got that smallmouth at the end. Mosquitoes are getting bad around here. I need to get some proper bug spray, a repellent of some sort. Next video, I already know Chip. Stop, he's chasing his tail and he's bumping into stuff and he almost knocked a weed whacker over. Chip, come here. I wanted to do a thing. It's a really, really random lure and I wanted to do a giveaway for anybody who guesses what lure this is correctly, or the first person who guesses what this lure is gonna be, gets a bait. What bait? This bait, it's a blackout, seven and a half inch shad swim bait. I've had this laying around for like a year, but these baits are awesome. Super good action, absolutely beautiful bait. I'm giving this away to the first person who can guess what the next lure I'm making is gonna be. And I'll give you a hint, it's freaking random. It, it's very random. Well, it is a creature that exists, and it's but it's a completely off the top of your head random creepy crawly thing. There's another hint. I'm gonna stop giving hints because it's gonna become too easy to guess. What do you think, Chip? Say it, Chip. Say it, on to the next bait. Say it. On to the next bait. Uh, I needed to add too. Uh, if you win, uh, be ready to like give me something like your email address in the comments or an Instagram handle or something so I can contact you. There's no messaging system on YouTube anymore so I need to contact you through something else. So be ready to do that if you win, if you guess correctly and you're the first one. On to the next bait.